Well, welcome. We're going to continue now uh, into chapter one of the unification uh, teachings, which is called the principle of creation and explore the nature of reality and lay the foundation for all the things that we're going to study in the unification principle. So beginning, we're going to look at history. Throughout history, people have anguished over fundamental questions of human life and the universe. And this is because no one has understood the root principle by which humanity and the universe were originally created. So this is the purpose that we want to explore in the unification principle. The fundamental question is, what is the causal reality of life? Problems concerning human life and the universe can't be solved without first understanding the nature of God. So the nature of God is the first place we want to begin exploring. So the next section of the unification principle is called the dual characteristics of God and the created universe. The challenge is that since God is invisible, how can we know the divine nature of this invisible God? It's not something that we could measure. Well, one way to f- understand God's nature and God's deity is by observing the universe, the things that God created. Just as we can come to know the character of an artist by looking at the works of that artist, so we can also understand the nature of God by observing all the different things of creation. In fact, this is what, how St. Paul expresses it in Romans 1.20. He says, Ever since the creation of the world, his invisible nature, speaking about God, namely his eternal power and deity, has been clearly perceived in the things that have been made. So they are without excuse. Well, so we can look at the things in the creation and the world around us and understand about God. The way the unification principle approaches this is we look at what are the common elements that we find uh, throughout the natural world. First, we look and see that everything in creation comes with two qualities or aspects. The principle says every entity, both within the entity itself and also in relationships between it and other beings or entities, possesses a set of dual characteristics that the principle refers to as yang and yin. Now, this is an oriental concept. It's maybe easier for us Westerners to understand as yang is positivity or um, positive electrical charge or masculinity and yin as negative electrical charge or femininity. So yang and yin you could refer to as positive, negative, male and female qualities. And we see everything in creation. They come in two kinds positive and negative, male and female. Now there's a second set of dual characteristics, even more fundamental. Every entity possesses both an outer form, which we can see, and an inner quality. The visible outer form reflects that invisible inner quality. The way we refer to that, the inner quality, we call the internal nature. And the outer form or shape that's easy to see, that we can visibly see, we call the external form. Since internal nature and our external form correspond to the inner aspects of an entity, the external form can also be seen as reflecting that internal nature. One way to understand this is this internal nature and external form is our invisible internal mind and our visible external body mind and body, internal nature, our mind, our character, personality, external form, our physical body. So these are the two dual characteristics that we see common in everything in the universe and we reflect that these also are characteristics that came from the original source, which is God. So God also has these dual characteristics of masculine and feminine. So we refer to God as not only our Heavenly Father, but our Heavenly Parent, Father, Mother, actually, God. And then the internal quality of motivation and external form of the universe. Well, let's move on to uh, another section in the divine principle, the purpose of creation. And when we look at the biblical story in Genesis, after God completed each day of creation, he made the statement, he said, this is good. We know God's desire is to create a a good universe. God wanted his creations 
to be, and the principal calls the object partners, wanted partners that would embody goodness so that God could find joy and take delight in them. So object partners, uh, unification principle use this terminology, object, subject and object. Subject means the one that's initiating or giving, and object means the one that's receiving, coming back. But they're always referred to as partners. The subject initiating partner, and the object or receiving partner. So you'll see that term used often throughout the unification principle. The ultimate purpose of the universe, with human beings at the center, is to return joy to God. This is why God created the universe, is for the purpose of joy. Well, so how is joy produced? Joy is not produced by an individual alone. Joy happens when we have a partner, an object partner, someone who could receive, whether that partner is intangible or substantial, whether invisible or someone we can visibly see. Someone in which our internal nature and also our external form are reflected, when we can see that reflected in someone else. Our object partner gives us a, a stimulation that helps us feel our own qualities and nature. Everyone is looking for a good partner, subject partner and object partner. God feels the fullness of joy when he's stimulated by his substantial object partners, which is us, to feel his original internal nature and original external form. This is our purpose in life, is to be able to reflect that God's own original internal nature and God's original external form. The kingdom of heaven is realized through the fulfillment of what we will refer to as three great blessings. We take this from the book of Genesis and establishing a four position foundation you'll see that diagram of the four positions in just a minute that becomes a good partner an object partner to God and can give joy to God let's look in detail at those three great blessings they come from the book of Genesis Genesis 1 28 when God said be fruitful multiply and have dominion over the creation well, the first of God's three great blessings, the three great purposes in our life, is to be the perfection of individual character, to become fruitful. For this, a person should form a God-centered individual four-position foundation where the mind and the body uh, become one. Now, when we talk about this four position foundation you can see at the center is God at the center and then the four points like a baseball diamond you have the mind in relationship with its partner the body when they come together in oneness they create a, a whole being and God uh, can find joy in relationship and relating with that being this is our first of the first three great blessings is an individual foundation of perfection and become one in heart and mind with God. For the second great purpose, the second great blessing, individually perfected man, Adam originally, and Eve, woman, should create a God-centered family for position foundation. They would join together in loving oneness as a husband and as wife. And together, they would raise children. This four-position diagram is the foundation for describing this dynamic relationship of love in the family. Well, the third great purpose is, uh, means that the perfection of the human being's natural dominion or stewardship over the natural world. And for this to happen, we need, again, another God-centered, God at the center of a four-position foundation where human beings and the natural world come together in complete oneness and create a world where God can truly dwell and find joy in. So if we look fundamentally at these three great purposes in our life, the three great blessings that God has given us, first, to individually mature ourselves and become a person of true love, Second, to create a family with God at the center, 
filled with true love and a dominion or stewardship over things in creation with God at the center and love and, and joy from all of these. And all three of these great blessings are the ways that we can find fulfillment in our own personal lives, but also fulfillment of God's hope for having partners through which God can experience joy and happiness. Thank you very much.